The Owyhee Desert can be lonely, desolate, and forbidding. Yet deep in its canyons are places of wonder and inspiration. I think it is totally amazing. Slender waterways course through these canyon lands, providing a conduit for challenge and adventure. It's not an easy trip. From pack rafting and hiking to kayaking and canyoneering, there are many ways to journey through this remarkable landscape. This area is a treasure, a sanctuary of quiet. Outdoor Idaho heads deep into the desert to take you on a series of Owyhee adventures. Funding for Outdoor Idaho is made possible by the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore and Bettis family legacy of building the great state of Idaho, by the Friends of Idaho Public Television, by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. To a lot of folks, the Owyhee Desert is a land of sagebrush and cheatgrass, dry, lonely, and isolated. It's true, the Owyhee is challenging, but there are some hidden gems out here. Hi, I'm Bruce Reichert, and welcome to Outdoor Idaho. Narrow canyons, remarkable creeks and streams, places of real grandeur and solitude, places where you can reconnect with nature like nowhere else. The Owyhee Desert, it's a sea of sage and rock, occasionally pierced by incredible canyons chasms created over the centuries by churning water carving deep into vast lava fields. The Owyhee River is the largest waterway cutting through this stark country. Its flows not only carve canyons, they also bring this desert to life. The Owyhee begins in northern Nevada, where mountain snows feed the east and south forks of the river as they stream toward Idaho. In all, the Owyhee River will travel nearly 350 miles through the secluded corners of three states. With dozens of tributaries, it drains 11,000 square miles of isolated desert. The Owyhee country of southwest Idaho and southeast Oregon and northern Nevada is some of the most remote country in uh, the entire United States. It's inaccessible, inhospitable, and yet wonderful and rejuvenating place to be. Photographs don't do it justice. You have to be here to really understand the grandeur that exists in the Owyhee Plateau. That grandeur is in full display along many of the waterways in the Owyhee. From the subtle beauty of a smaller canyon like Pole Creek to the rugged spires along the North Fork of the Owyhee River. Sections of both canyons are so striking they were protected under a 2009 bill that created several new desert wilderness areas in Idaho. Also included in the wilderness bill were long stretches of the East Fork of the Owyhee and two remarkable tributaries that flow into it, Battle Creek and Deep Creek. In a short window each spring, it is possible to float Deep Creek, but you'll have to travel far into the desert, rolling over dusty dirt roads for hours, and that's if your timing is right. Two most important things in trying to plan this trip are trying to figure out the flow and the weather. It can rain like crazy in the spring. The roads can get incredibly muddy and impassable. It's a committing adventure in terms of logistics. The shuttle you have to set up to do this run involves requesting uh, permission from a rancher who owns land at the put-in. We feel really lucky to be here uh, for this trip this spring. This uh, particular river probably hasn't been paddleable, or if it has, it's been very short windows uh, over the last several years. In addition to tough logistics, another thing you can count on in the Owyhees is cold mornings. It can be 70, 75 degrees during the day, and then it can go down to 20 or 25 degrees at night. And in the morning you'll wake up and everything can be covered with a quarter inch of frost. 
It's all part of the challenge of paddling Deep Creek and makes finally getting on the water even more satisfying. Deep Creek! So this is my first time down Deep Creek. It's just one of the most beautiful places I've been in Southwest Idaho. I think I'm one of many people who find a lot of solace and rejuvenation in rivers. What it does for me is it clears my mind. You're just enjoying the moment, you're in the moment, and that is a very calming and wonderful experience. For AC, Deep Creek is a surprising gem. You would never expect that a tiny little creek can have pools of water that are 150 yards long and canyons that get larger and more dramatic. It just gets better and better the further down river that you go. And it's not only Deep Creek itself that's dramatic, there's also the appeal of exploring side canyons. You know, the desert holds all sorts of secrets, and uh, one of the really pleasurable ones is to discover a slot canyon. It gives you a respite from the sun on the river, and, uh, and you can go up into this little oasis of tight rock. Really, really fun to explore. And the sense of discovery, you do feel like as if you're the first person that's ever walking on this ground. Wherever you go, whether it's up a slot canyon, a side canyon, a hillside, it really feels like as if you're the first person here. Deep Creek is a place where you can experience true solitude. Whether it's hiking or paddling, you'll seldom see other groups. Back on the water, the boaters continue to contend with the thick willows along the creek. The willows have grown really thick in spots, and the water has carved small paths through those willows. It's like working through a maze. Well, my interpretation would be that this is a class two water river and a class four willow river. You really do come upon willows where you can't even see where the river goes. After a couple days of paddling and camping, the group reaches the east fork of the Owyhee. They're now only one rapid and a few miles from the takeout. Once you get to the confluence, the flow increases pretty dramatically. It's going around the bend and it water pushes you in towards the wall and you bounce off the wall, you're liable to flip, but that's just on one rapid. Everyone in our group had a successful run on probably what amounts to the hardest rapid of the trip, but I think everyone was smiling and it was a good time. The last challenge of the journey is dragging all the boats and gear to the top of the hill where the trucks are parked. The hike out is very difficult, but it's doable uh, if you take a little bit of gear at a time. So I would not suggest this for the very novice or the weak of heart or the weak of muscle. It's a class one, two float and a class four or five um, takeout. The takeout climbs must be one to 200 vertical feet on a very rough single track trail. It's a difficult, difficult spot. Stahl doesn't mind the effort to experience this country. And he gets extra satisfaction knowing that his group's work helped protect these desert waters. Much of the East Fork and Deep Creek are now designated wilderness with large stretches also classified as wild and scenic rivers. So it had been years since we'd had a wild and scenic river in Idaho. This is a place that Idaho Rivers United helped to protect through eight years of collaborative efforts and sitting at the table and hammering out differences. And this is a wild and scenic river now because we sat at that table and that's really exciting and really rewarding. That wild and scenic section of the East Fork of the Owyhee stretches for nearly 70 miles. It runs from the western edge of the Duck Valley Reservation all the way to the Oregon border. And one of the most rugged parts of the East Fork begins just a few miles below its confluence with Deep Creek. This area includes Owyhee Falls and Lambert Gorge. It's just that kind of country that calls to an adventurous group called Idaho Outdoors. All it took was a posting on their online site to put together another desert trip. They have a sense of adventure. They have a spirit for exploration. I don't know if I really know exactly why. There's just a draw, the desert. I have fallen in love with the desert, the remoteness of it and it's just amazing to feel you're that far out. 
for Hennessy and the others, the new sport of pack rafting has given them unlimited options for their desert explorations. It's a great activity because you combine hiking and rafting into one. Pack rafts, that just opened up a whole nother world because you can actually take everything you need on your back, hike into some place that there's really not any other way to get to and float a section of river that you just wouldn't otherwise be able to, to access. But even with the ultralight boats, these packs still weigh in at around 40 to 50 pounds. That's a pretty heavy load to haul down this steep access they've chosen to get to the East Fork. And most of these hikes in are real steep, no trail. Uh, we just drop down 1,000, 1,500 feet in a mile. So you really have to be prepared. The paths down are not often well defined, so you have to be good at route finding and choosing what works best for you on how to get down and keeping the sense of where you are and not forgetting to look around. And there's just something really magical about being able to carry everything that you need right there on your back, and then you get down to a beautiful river and everything goes on the boat, and then you just get a float down the river. This spring, the group is floating on only about 70 CFS of water. A low snowpack limited the Owyhee runoff. The good news for them is they're likely the only boaters on the East Fork this weekend. It's just beautiful. And it's wild. There's nobody out there but the people you're with. So much of it is untouched. And that's what draws me to any outdoor experience is going places and seeing beautiful things and experiencing it. The really fun part is, is we've got into places down there where we had these big boulders in the, in the river and you can pick and explore. And I really like that. We actually went through some arches, you know, amazing little places. It's not like there's a guidebook that's telling you what you have to do now. It's kind of fun to be able to figure that out and everybody helps everybody and we all get through it. Everybody helping becomes especially important when they reach one of the two places they can't boat through, Owyhee Falls. It's one of the toughest portages on the river. It was long and it was steep and the ground was loose. You know, that first portage took us several hours, probably three, four hours off trail, high. Even with these lightweight pack rafts, it was still a strenuous portage and then just shortly downstream, another mile or two, we had a second portage that was also pretty difficult. The portages were pretty hard, and it was probably one of the hardest days I've had out on the river to do that. But the scenery was amazing, and it was worth every, every agonizing step to do it. These difficult trips take plenty of effort. And Lambert Gorge is certainly one of the more challenging areas of the Owyhee. Yet for most of this group, that's part of the appeal. The physical and mental challenge is part of what I like about it. That's kind of what life is about, is just experiences and taking a little bit of risk and not sitting still too long. Owyhees are beautiful. All these canyons are awesome. I mean, I could just get lost in them for days. <laughs> And you know that you're down in this place where there's no way out other than to go down the river. It's kind of a magical feeling to be down there. And there's just not many people that are going to be able to see this kind of scenery. I think the payoff is reconnecting with yourself and reconnecting with our world. Lambert Gorge is just one of many beautiful places in the Oahis, And you have that sense of adventure but it's absolutely gorgeous and stunning, absolutely stunning. Another way to find adventure in the Owyhees is to explore any of the hundreds of side canyons that aren't boatable. All right, yeah, let's kind of fan together. Rafting guy John Barker has added canyoneering to his list of offerings in recent years. It opens up even more desert country to discover. There's an entire canyon lands out here that's just stunning. The grass is still pretty wet, isn't it? <laughs> so I thought, boy, if people are out here, they ought to come out and do a little hiking and see what some of the tributaries are like. 
just that mystery of the Oahe Bruno Canyonlands. It looks like nothing as you're driving out there, and then you can find a tiny little ribbon oasis of a really mystical, sheer rock-walled gorge. Of course, it's always difficult getting into these remote corners of the desert. And finding a place to drop down into a slot canyon is another challenge. Up on that plateau and looking down inside, you're always wondering if you're going to make it down there. But the, the beauty and, you know, it just beckons to you to come down, come down. Every step closer was just exciting, especially when you saw the water. <laughs> Got her, Shane? Yeah. Hiking guide Shane Moser helps Barker move the guests safely through these inspiring canyons. The thing that I enjoy the most about it is being able to share that place with people that wouldn't be able to go there or wouldn't probably even think about going there on their own. All these canyons are kind of the blood veins of the canyon lands. They all have their own little feel and their own job in kind of providing water to the place. The first range we went down was really steep and boulder choked. I mean, like house sized boulders that we were crawling through. Yeah, there really isn't a trail there, you know, it's, so it's uh, pretty much wilderness and you kind of have to sometimes make your own trail or just make decisions for your own safety, I guess. It, it is a spectacular canyon. The whole canyon is booming with the water coming down through the holes in the rocks. And so there's like a hobbit hole down there that we had to get on our butts and slide and taking it one step at a time and going slow, that's, that's kind of the key, I think. Sliding, scrambling, and climbing are all part of a canyoneering adventure. And there's another essential activity, swimming. We had heard about it right from day one, is there's gonna be a pool, you will be swimming. I mean, the cold just shocks you, but it's exhilarating. I would do it again in a moment. The number one goal is to keep everything dry, in addition to keeping everyone safe. You know, once you take the plunge and you're in the water, you're cold, so you want to get it done quick. And I think we did a good job uh, moving those things across the pool. The narrow, boulder-choke canyon leads into a larger canyon and a different hiking experience for the group. It was nice. It was a good change from the bouldering, yeah, actually, you know, so it was uh, very picturesque down in there. There were different challenges instead of moving through and around big sometimes slippery boulders. We moved to more of a mud bank and grassy banks and some overgrown shrubbery and that kind of thing. Kind of that meadow area that was along the stream. Some of my very favorite moments are looking down and seeing the grasses. They are absolutely beautiful because they're just dancing in the water along the edges and crossing back and forth and back and forth and trying to keep your balance. Yeah, the ankles, the knees, I think all piece of my body feels it. <laughs> the Owyhees definitely extract a price to experience their secluded beauty. But those who journey into these remote canyons often find a special connection. I really love being out there and being in the blood flow, you know, the veins of the place. The Canyonlands are a very special place. It's worth some hardship for me, especially because there's no other place like it. Part of the allure is, is just the uniqueness of the place. I like being out here in the Canyonlands as much as I can. John Barker also loves being out in the Canyonlands as much as possible. And it's one of the reasons he owns an outfitting business that specializes in rafting these desert rivers. This stretch, known as the mid Owyhee, begins near the Idaho-Oregon border and offers an adventurous journey not many have experienced. The challenges out here are definitely the remoteness and difficulty of the roads. I enjoy the solitude and serenity that's out here. And mostly, I like being out here where there aren't very many people. You get to show your guests something really unique and really special. So launching at Three Forks, you're only on the river for a mile and a half or so when you come to the ledge, which is one of my favorite rapids. Whenever you have a uh, four or five foot drop, you're absolutely sure that the nose is gonna get caught back under and you're gonna spill out. But somehow those guys are very skillful and they keep the nose up and you go over it and come out. 
I really just didn't have any expectations going into that and you know we went out there and the next thing I know oh it's a ledge oh we're going over it oh that was really cool these rivers are different they're technical they're challenging very different environment than other rivers so that's why I enjoy working on the desert it's a little roll behind this dog yes. It's the uniqueness of this place that keeps Larry Fredrickson coming back as often as possible, nearly every season for the past 15 years. He's done every stretch of desert rivers that Barker offers. I love it. I mean, I love, I love the canyons. Nobody's out here. It's almost like a religious experience sometimes. Quiet. I don't do a whole lot of talking as I'm going through them. I just kind of sit there and you look. And it's all this jaw-dropping beauty. It almost gets numbing at times because there's so much of it. I enjoy the quietness flowing through the canyons, the steep rhyolite canyons. I mean, I just, I love looking up and seeing those spires just sticking up. You know, I just love that. It's pretty amazing to, to connect with uh, this part of nature. The quiet beauty is often punctuated by the rumbling of whitewater. One of the longer and more difficult rapids on this stretch of the Owyhee is called Half Mile. Go where the water's pushing you to the right bank, three feet off the right bank. We typically scout Half Mile. That's a real long rapid, goes around a blind corner. It's good to walk down and make sure you know what's gonna happen at that point. Once the guides choose a route, the rafts line up for their runs. Half mile is a nice rapid because you've got a bunch of Indian petroglyphs there. It's a little bit of a pucker factor, you know, the old heartbeat yeah, gets yeah. going and then you work your way down through the rapid and you get to the end and there's a sense of accomplishment. You turn around, look back up river at what you just went through as a group and you go, yeah, wow, I'm glad to be here. My passion is rowing. I love rowing when you have good runs and taking people through to those rapids, that's, that's satisfying. It's not just running the rapids, a lot of things goes into river trips and actually time off on the river for us is running the rapids. When we get to camp, work starts at the camp. That's when the guides set up the kitchen, cook and do other chores. Of course, camps like bomb shelter and other scenic spots make the job much more enjoyable. The camps have been great. As we're going along today, I'm just looking around going, really, where are we gonna camp? You go around the corner and there's this great spot and there you go. <laughs> the remoteness of this river has been impressive. You, know, you don't see anyone and it is just so peaceful, awe-inspiring, seeing a lot of this country, it's great. The small group is awed by the natural displays that fill the canyons. From flashes of lightning to torrential downpours, the pelting rain is just a prelude to the biggest challenge on this stretch of the Owyhee, an encounter with a seething rapid called Widowmaker. Widowmaker is a focal point to that stretch of the river. Oh, it's a true class five rapid. A very difficult portage, giant rocks along the bank for a long ways. Luckily, we've really developed for us a system that works with lining the boats. It's impressive just the amount of gear in the boat. So all that weight and then all the dry bags for everyone's gear, that kind of thing. That's a lot of material to move and you're not getting on a trail that somebody's cut or anything like that. I think the one that really impressed me was when we got all the boats through, we had one left, and John Barker decided he would row through the rapids. For most rafters, Widowmaker is basically unrunnable, but they're not John Barker. For me, I have to do stuff like that every once in a while. You get a sense of feeling a little more alive and an adrenaline rush of success that, that you accomplished it, and it makes you feel good. Overcoming the many obstacles this remote country can put in your path is always challenging. The Oahi doesn't yield its treasures easily. But if you're willing to meet the desert on its own terms, 
you can find great rewards. Everybody takes the challenges with an air of adventure and we enjoy challenges. So it's been a great outing for all of us. This is what I do. I love to raft, I love to be down here in the desert. It's such an incredible expanse, part of the ecosystem that very few people really get a chance to see. I think the solitude and serenity of the canyon lands is unmatched by most places we can get to anywhere today. It really does still call to me and keep pulling me out here. And I'm gonna keep coming out here again and again. It's the place for me. Funding for Outdoor Idaho is made possible by the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore and Bettis family legacy of building the great state of Idaho, by the Friends of Idaho Public Television, by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting,